And one of the many questions that I think all of us are asking right now is why does Robert Sala and the New York Jets continue to insist on Zach Wilson at quarterback? Yesterday, Robert Sala's asked a direct question about, I don't know, why don't you play Trevor Simeon? Why don't you see what you got? And Robert Sala said something so odd and so concerning. He said, I plead the fifth. (laughs) Usually, when you plead the fifth, you can't answer the question because you don't want to incriminate yourself. Earlier today, the great Connor Hughes, one of the better reporters out there, was direct with his head coach and simply said, are you making the decisions? Who's making the decisions? We'll hear from Robert Sala in a second on how he answered it. But before we hear from Robert Sala, Tiki, Mm -hmm. who's deciding to start Zach Wilson every Sunday? It should be the head coach because that's his job. It's his job to put his team in the best position to win, to motivate them, to instruct them, to uh, get them prepared for whoever the opponent is and put the best team on the field. I believe in meritocracy, and I think football might be the the best sport to exhibit meritocracy Mm because if you suck – and there's a better alternative, that better alternative better be played. <laughs> yes. Period. I'm just serious. No, you're right. How it works. You're right. And you <laughs> answered with the who should be making those decisions. Mm-hmm. Well, earlier today, Connor Hughes point blank to Robert Sala, and he even laid out some of the facts that we talked about yesterday, that when it's not Zach Wilson at quarterback over the last three years, the guys who have filled in have been better, whether it was Josh Johnson or Joe Flacco or the great Mike F. and White. So here's Connor's question. Here's Robert's answer. And we're all going to try to figure out the mystery together. Who's forcing Zach Wilson down our throats? You need to focus on doing the best he can and, and take the plays that are given to him and, and be great at what he's being asked to do. But um, he'll come around. He's got the right mindset, so I'm not, I'm not overly concerned about the direction he's going. Robert, statistically speaking, this offense has operated at a higher clip with just about every other quarterback or every other quarterback you guys have used aside from Zach Wilson over the last three years. Is there a mandate or push or an initiative from above to continue to stick with Zach Wilson in spite of this? No, we're, we're on the same page with that. So, you know, any any conspiracy theory that might be out there, we're, we're on the same page. Okay. I'm not a conspiracy guy. Mm. I'm not a conspiracy guy. But I want to know this. Is Robert Sala incompetent or is he lying to us? And I hate that those are the two options. I do. Mm. I feel awful. Well, I don't think he's lying to you. So it's not coming from Joe Douglas. You believe his answer because he just said we're all on the same page. We all want to start Zach Wilson. You believe that answer. I think when he says they're all on the same page, what he's saying is that the alternatives aren't better. Now, we don't know that. Like, we don't know that. <laughs> Me and you and the consuming public, maybe the team does, or maybe the coaches do, but we don't know that. And so I think the the reality is that they believe in Zach Wilson, as crazy as that sounds, because we haven't seen it consistently enough. We, again, in fairness to Zach, there have been moments, right? There have been five throws a game. But the consistency is not even close to being good enough to to win, much less when you have a, a team that is kind of primed to win. You got good talent offensively. You got what well, great defense. All you need is your quarterback to play above average football. And I don't even not, think I don't, it doesn't have to be above average. It just has to be not terrible. Like literally, I don't even think it needs to be above average. It just needs to be not terrible. And here's why I question. What you just said they think, which Mm -hmm. is we don't believe Trevor Simeon or Tim Boyle are better options. Yeah. It's exactly what Connor said in this question. When they have been forced to start other quarterbacks over the last three years, and those guys are Mike White, Josh Johnson, and a washed-up Joe Flacco, okay? Mm -hmm. The New York Jets have scored more points. Mm -hmm. They just have. Last year in 2023... Mike White and Joe Flacco threw eight touchdown passes. They completed 58% of their passes. Zach Wilson threw six and completed 55% of his passes. Same thing in 2022. Same thing in 2021 when Mike White looked great before he got hurt. And Josh Johnson actually looked good when he came in in the Indianapolis game. So it is very difficult to just buy the BS of, oh, trust me, Trevor Simeon's not any good. Trust me. Tim Boyle's not any good. Well, guess what? Mm. Mike White, Josh Johnson, and Joe Flacco, they're all not starting in the NFL right now. 
They're all not good based on that answer. Yet with my own eyes and with all of our eyes, we saw those guys outperform Zach Wilson when they were playing for Zach Wilson. So when I've already seen that with Josh Johnson, and I've seen it with Mike White, and I've seen it with the fossil of Joe Flacco, it is very tough to take seriously this, well, just trust me, he's not as good as Trevor Simeon. I don't trust you, and I don't mean you specifically. I mean that answer because we have evidence that says otherwise. No, you're not wrong about this, and the and the and the the truth of the matter is those guys might be better but i don't the i don't think they want to find out what those guys could do because then it puts them in a very awkward situation of of basically having to cut Zach Wilson and now that decision would go right back uphill to uh, the general manager to Joe Douglas if if Tim Boyle comes in and plays, I don't know, I don't want to say phenomenal because I don't think he's capable of playing phenomenal. Doesn't have to. But you play competently and you score 17 points, which isn't asking a ton, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden Zach's on the bench again, you might as well cut him, right? You might as well just say, see you later. And then that's a failure uh, to the general manager. Okay, it's but a well, failure well, to the hit organization. You hit on it. You hit and on if it. that happens, then you never live that down. But Tiki, Tiki, you just hit on it. So we all have... I think three choices, maybe four choices on why Zach Wilson not only continues to start, but it doesn't feel like he's in any kind of position where if he struggles, Mm -hmm. they're going to pull him. He's not on any kind of hot seat. Yeah. Well, he's not. Yeah. Go ahead. Keep going. So we try to figure out where is it coming from? It could be Robert Sala who just said, yeah, it's my decision. You believe it's his decision. Mm -hmm. It could be coming from Joe Douglas because as Joe Beningo said yesterday, and I know that's his belief. Joe Douglas picked him number two. You just alluded to Mm -hmm. it. You can't live it down if you admit there's a failure. So it could be coming from the general manager of this team, who in a lot of ways has done a brilliant job and a lot of ways has done a terrible job. It could be coming from the owner, Woody Johnson. I don't happen to believe that, but it could be. I don't think so. Okay. I know know that that's there, and I know that's been a narrative in previous series or previous seasons, but I don't think that this is a a Woody Johnson directive. I have Zach Wilson. We drafted him. He's my guy. I love him. I don't think that's the case. I happen to agree with you. I don't think it's Woody. The other option is it's an Aaron Rodgers decision because Aaron Rodgers has been empowered in this franchise, has talked glowingly about Zach Wilson, believes in Zach Wilson, and so is Aaron Rodgers kind of one of the voices saying, no, you have to stick with Zach. Mm. I want to know who's making this decision because I'm still trying to figure out why the decision is being made. Because the New York Jets are wasting an utterly brilliant defense. And they're wasting it the same way they did last year. And they're doing it without making any kind of significant changes. So I'll make a deal with anyone out there that still wants to run Zach out there. And you're not there unless your opinion's changed in the last 24 hours. No. Do you want Zach Wilson to start anymore? No, I'd rather see what the alternative does. Okay. Now, it could be worse. But (laughs) at least you would know. I'm serious. It could be worse. It could be. But at least you would know. (laughs) So I'll make you a deal. Even though I would rather sit him right now and I would go into that game against the Raiders and say, I've seen enough of Zach Wilson. What I beg from this head coach is let him start. And if they get a three and out on drive number one Mm -hmm. and they're not moving the football and Zach's turning the ball over because Max Crosby rips a football away from him, make a change. Mm -hmm. Make a change for the sake of all of us. Make a change for the sake of this defense and make a change because you cannot allow this season to slip away the way you allowed it to slip away last year. I don't know who's making the decisions. Yeah. There is a part of me that thinks it's Joe Douglas saying, no, no, we got to stick with Zach. We got to stick with Zach. And what Joe Douglas doesn't understand, I got news flash for Joe Douglas. It's over. It was a failed pick. And the day you acquired Aaron Rodgers, you admitted Mm -hmm. it was a failed pick. So we don't need to do this anymore. This isn't year one. This isn't year two. We don't have to do the song and dance of, we still believe in Zach. Let's run him out there. We don't want to admit the pick was a failure. Tiki, we all know the pick was a failure. So there's a there's another thing that Robert Sala said that is, he's not wrong, and, he's, and he makes a good point. He says, with... With Zach Wilson under center, they've had a chance to win in the fourth quarter all season long. So Zach is not horrible. I I will keep saying it. He's not like this dud. He's not like this bust. He's not this guy who has no business being in the NFL. But he's not good enough 
to win or score points and win football games. And so, but he is good enough not to be a liability. And I think that's that's what Coach Sala is, is leaning on, is that as long as we protect him enough, he's not a liability to lose us a game. Now, he did last week because of the sack fumbles, but it wasn't because he made dumb decisions. Yeah, but Tiki, it wasn't when you're because scoring... He, it wasn't because he threw a... Uh, trying to be a hero and threw a bad interception. Like he's he doesn't throw interceptions, but he also is so cautious not to throw any sep- interceptions. It prevents him from doing anything great. So you're right. He's not throwing interceptions. He has put the ball on the ground recently. Yes. But if you're scoring the fourth fewest fo- points in the NFL, mm-hmm. and offensively you're scoring the second fewest points in the NFL, it'd be number one if the Giants didn't exist, but they do. <laughs> you don't believe that even when you're not turning the ball over, but you're not scoring points. You're dead last in third down conversion. You're dead last in red zone efficiency. You are scoring fewer points than almost every team in the NFL, mm-hmm. even despite not turning the ball over. You don't think that's a liability? Uh, well, well, no, because the, te- the team is in position to to be competitive. Now, last week it felt like it got away from them, but for, for the most part, even the losses, the Jets feel like, oh, all, all you need is one good thing to happen, and you can win the Why game. Why is that? Because their defense is great. Yes, it has nothing to do with the offense. That's why it is a liability. But, but it, Just because he's not turning the ball over doesn't make it okay. They're scoring no points. So when they do turn the ball over, like they did against the Chargers, you you lose by 21 yes, points. Yes, they get blown out. You get blown out. Yes. But for the most part, he hasn't been a turnover machine. But he's not scoring and points. We don't know, I know that. But we don't know if you put Tim Boyle in or Trevor Simeon, if they're going to think they know what they're doing because they're veterans and turn into turnover machines. Hey, Tiggy, and, I, then, and then you really put your defense at a disadvantage. And then you give your you, – you take away any opportunity to win a football game. So, I, I, like, it's a fine, like, calculation that you have to go through – if, if you're the if you're the Jets right now, because you like Zach Wilson's work ethic, you like that he's a grinder. You don't like that he does he's not very productive, but he's also not a serious liability. I know the fumbles were bad last week, but for generally speaking, he's not a liability. Like he's not costing you games because he's making dumb decisions. He's not stop making very many decisions. That's what it comes down to. I, I've always said with head coaches in this town. There's always that moment where you decide on them. It shouldn't happen right away. You should give it time. Mm -hmm. There's that moment where you say he's not the guy. And there's a few examples that jump out at me. I remember uh, two years ago working with Craig. There was a moment he turned on Joe Judge. It was before everybody else. I guess I give him a little bit of credit. But it was also probably a personal thing. But (laughs) either way, he turned on him. He was done with him. I remember the moment I turned on him. What was the issue? Uh, the Craig personal issue? Yeah. I think it was that he wouldn't come on the show. <laughs> oh, my God. I forget Dude, what mine was on. specifically. It was at some point during his second year where I said, he's not the guy. I yeah. remember the moment with Todd Bowles. I remember the moment with Eric Mangini. What I've always said about Robert Sala here as we are in year three is I'm still on the fence. His handling of the quarterback situation from day one, is the reason why I no longer have any confidence in him whatsoever. And that's the specific reason. It's not usage of timeouts. It's not even the dog crap effort we saw against the Chargers. It's not even that. What is causing me as a Jet fan in the midst of year three to say he's not the guy, the way I felt about Adam Gase and Todd Bowles and Eric Mangini at some point, is literally one issue. Mm -hmm. And it's the issue of continuing to defend incompetent quarterback play. I don't get it. I'm trying to figure out why. I'm trying to think, is it Joe Douglas? Is it Aaron Rodgers? Is it Woody Johnson? And here's the truth. It doesn't even matter where it's coming from. He continues to do it. Yeah. He continues to stand there at press conferences when Connor Hughes says point blank what we all know, which is, Robert, when other quarterbacks play, They've been more productive than mm-hmm. Zach. I'm glad Connor Essek posed that question or posed that fact because we all know it. We all know it. And yet this head coach continues to defend it. So why on November 8th, I'm at the point of a Jet fan of saying we will never win with this guy? Literally is because he continues to be blind in defending his quarterback. And it boggles my mind because Robert Sala is a smart guy. Mm-hmm. Robert Sala could be a really good head coach. Yet he has a blind spot for Zach Wilson, I, I, and I don't get it. Yeah, maybe because he drafted him. It's the first quarterback he drafted, even though it was Joe Douglas. Or uh, yeah, Joe Douglas's draft. He still feels like he owes it to him, and he believes that he can get better. I just don't think he's going to get better. 
I, I just I, I I've given up on it. I, I and I and I like I like Zach. I do. I think he's a good kid. I think he works hard. But there's at certain point you just know when a guy doesn't have it. Right? There's an it. There's an instinct. Right. There's a I don't know a, a, an intangible that exists for guys that have it. He just doesn't. You and it's s- not a knock on him. It's not anything other than he just doesn't have it. You mentioned it's maybe because they drafted him. He was their first quarterback. Look, I understand from personal mm-hmm. experience. My first girlfriend and the first person that, I, you know, we yeah. we hooked up, I was blind spotted. Like, I was already locked in. And even when she cheated on me, I, rem- <laughs> I swear, I remained like, ah, you know what? Ah, not a big deal. And I'm a loser. <laughs> and it took me time, not as much time as Robert Sala, but it took me time to realize, Evan, just because she was the first woman that, you know, that doesn't mean you should be run over. Well, you were emotionally attached. I was emotionally attached. And that's what Don't, happens when you draft a quarterback but guess in, what? in the first round. It's the first one. Tiki. You get emotionally attached. I was emotionally attached. I made huge mistakes. I look back on it. I laugh at myself. How incompetent was I? Mm-hmm. But then there was a moment where I realized, Evan, what are you doing? And I woke up. When does Robert Sala wake up, Tiki? I mean... You hope it's before this season gets lost. We can't have another titanic end to the season like we saw a year ago based on incompetent quarterback play. So does it happen in the first half against the Raiders? Does it happen today? Does it happen in a week? I'm just fearful it happens before it's too late. Mm -hmm. That's what scares me, that this season, which still has a chance to be special, it still has a chance to end with the New York Jets playing a postseason game. Dude, it hasn't happened since Obama's first administration. Like, do we not understand how long this has been? Just get to the playoffs. Get there. And unfortunately, this head coach is letting his blind spot, because his first love quarterback, he's letting that get in the way. And whether it's Joe Douglas or it's Aaron Rodgers or it's Woody Johnson or it's something else, it is mind-boggling that they continue to have faith in a quarterback that cannot score points. It doesn't mean all their offensive issues are on him. I feel like I have to say that. Yes, the offensive line stinks. Yes, Alan Lazard's gone backwards. We get that. But the quarterback isn't good enough. And I hope they change it at some point. But right now, Tiki, I don't know if they will. I wish I could tell you confidently that they would. That it's gonna a certain situation will happen. Or a series of things will happen. I tell you what, if he has a bad date, those two interceptions, and just looks lost against the Raiders, maybe it will happen. Maybe that, maybe that's what needs to occur. I mean, serious, <laughs> it, it, like it, just an ugly because we haven't had an ugly, ugly moment yet. Like an ugly three interception. God, you look lost game yet. We haven't had that so yet. So it has to get worse is what you're saying. No, I'm serious. It has to get no, worse. No, I agree, but you're saying it has to get it, worse? It has to get uh. worse offensively. Otherwise, you're not getting a change. You're getting, well, maybe he's getting closer. Yeah, he looks good in practice. He handled that two-minute drill against air perfectly, right? Th- those type of things, th- th- that's what they see. Yeah, I got good news, though, for you, Ev. Really good news. The drought has been long. We could see the, the silver lining. Do you know the drought that also goes back to the Obama administration just as long? What's that? How long it's been since Aaron Rodgers played in the Super Bowl. <laughs> the Jets killed Carl. What, 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 why are you using this to take a shot at the one competent, competent oh. quarterback on my roster? Just, I'm not showing you. If you, guys, if you guys can believe he can is, go to a Super this Bowl, is the, then this it's is not is that long a drop. This is the epitome of hater. I mean, really? I'm hey, you hate the Jets. Oh, I enjoyed the Open. Thank you. Thank you. It's not about the Super Bowl. It's not about Aaron Rodgers. It's literally about getting to mid-January and playing a playoff game. I'm happy for you guys that the Giants had that a year ago. No, seriously. Mm -hmm. I was happy for you. This franchise hasn't had it in a very, very, very long time. And when you have a team or half of a roster that's this special, you can't waste it.